This episode is sponsored by Valvrex. Valvrex is a full home improvement company located in Charlotte, North Carolina, and servicing the surrounding areas. They offer services ranging from porch enclosures to additions to decks, patios, windows, roofing, siding, all the way to building a new home. If you're looking for any home improvement needs that you have around your house and you're looking to improve your home, give them a call. Number is 980-477-1783. Or you can email them at office at valverex.com. And Valverex is spelled V-A-L-V-E-R-A-X. You can look them up online. Again, give them a call at 980-477-1783. Thank you. So today we're having Ivan Wojniak. He's a fitness coach, a personal trainer and nutrition co coach, uh, NPC competitor, uh, bodybuilder, and an author. He wrote a book, right? Eating Made Simple, Stop Dining and Eat uh, and Simply Eat. <laughs> So yeah. welcome, welcome. How are you? I'm doing great. Just enjoying the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, just actually did some work, checked out some clients, uh, signed up some new people, and uh, now I'm here. Awesome. Cool, cool. So we'll be talking, or I'm going to be asking you like all kinds of random questions, all over the place kind of questions. But just to begin, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you are, who you are today? Yeah, absolutely. So... Uh, I came to America about when I was 13 years old with my family, uh, so I'm an immigrant, and uh, then um, I had a hard time in school, as uh, most immigrants, because of the language, so I didn't really have like the opportunity to really chase uh, so for education as far as college, so I had to kind of find my own ways. I always was into you know, taking care of my body, because I used to be very passionate about soccer, so I was always an athlete. Uh, but then once soccer didn't lead to a career um, where it's, you know, paying money, I decided to let me just uh, do something for myself and just take on bodybuilding, mm -hmm. right? So I started bodybuilding as in like, just trying to get in shape, try to get, you know, ripped abs, just, you know, for the look-wise, you know. And I signed up for, my, for a first show and competition in Miami. I did the show and I learned a lot about physique and how to apply nutrition to myself. Everything was through magazines because back in the day, we didn't have like Instagram and uh, like information within a flick of the finger. So we didn't have that back in the day. So it's magazines, you know, books and uh, uh, internet. So information came a little bit slower. So it wasn't the best information. So I made a lot of mistakes through, you know, just the process of learning, applying, what worked, what didn't, you know. What, just to interrupt um, you really quick, but, what year was that that you signed up for that uh, bodybuilding competition? So that was about, in fact, I think it's about 10 years ago now. So I was uh, about 25. Okay. So 10 years, 25, that was my first like bodybuilding show. And uh, I mean, I came in in great shape for the time I had to work with, uh, myself and doing it by myself. Um, but nothing competitive wise to what other guys were doing when they had coaches, mm -hmm. you know? Um, uh, so that kind of sparked the interest in bodybuilding and fitness. Right. And then, uh, what happened was people was like, Hey, asking for advice. They were like, Hey, how do you get in shape? How do you do this? How do you eat? So I just kept giving advices for free. I wasn't a trainer. I started making YouTube videos. If you look at my like old YouTube videos, I had like, you know, gold locks, long hair, you know, talking about just giving information for what I experienced, try to give it to people and let them apply it and see what happens to them. And people appreciate it. Then eventually that led to me believing myself that I was more of a professional at this. So that's when I kind of started asking to get paid for the information as in like it became a personal trainer. You know, I started with one client, before you know it, you do a good job, you have two clients, and then kind of spread it through the years of uh, doing a good job, you know. Um, so it's pretty much my business, my business, what you see now, where it's a successful business, where I make literally money from just personal training and my coaching and doing what I love. And it came through, not overnight, it came through 10, 15 years of just 
doing it, you know, one client by client, uh, getting people to um, believe in, in you and your reputation and creating a reputation for yourself and kind of earning people's trust, you know, that you know where you're doing. So that's the main thing um, I learned through the whole thing of doing bodybuilding is like um, people not going to just give their money away to you for, for nothing just because you're in shape. You know, you got to have some kind of result right. um, showing of other people that you could do it, you know. So that's, that's the big people you start creating if they want to get in the space of fitness. Yeah. So kind of going going a little bit back in time uh, to the beginning, you mentioned you were 13 when you moved to U.S. Um, mm -hmm. So that would be what, like 9th, 10th grade, something like that? Or 11th grade maybe? No. I'm going to night. It was like right, we're right when... Um, uh, 9, 9 11 happened. Okay. So, what was it like for you during high school? Like, you didn't know English before that, right? So, you're, you're learning no. English at the same time and trying to adapt into a new culture, new new everything. What was that like? That was uh, that was tough, but I didn't know any different. You know, yeah. you, know you don't know any different. When you just think, okay, well, they have no choice. That was hard. Uh, like, as far as teachers, they Maybe that's my perception, but they believe they believe that I wasn't smart enough. But in, in reality, I just didn't know the language. You know what I mean? And then, uh, even though people see me right now more outgoing, outspoken, I was super shy when I was mm -hmm. a kid. Not because like I was shy because just who I was, but because you don't know the language, so you don't want to say something wrong and have kids laugh at you, and then you know you're not going to speak up. So there's sometimes I even knew the answers to certain questions and uh, I wouldn't answer those questions because I just didn't think I will come out uh, the right way because of the language barrier. So that was tough part. But, you know, as uh, as when you come to different, from different country, you don't know any better. You know, that's just what you have to do, yeah. you know, learn a language, you know, and and uh, get used to it. That's it. So, so would you say um, you mentioned like you were kind of shy or whatever, but not because necessarily of your personality. So, were, are are you more of an introvert or an extrovert? Uh, definitely okay. introvert. I'm definitely more quiet. You know, I think that this job and this career kind of made me come out more. Like without it, like I have to talk to people now. I have to speak. So, it kind of really brought out. Uh, this part of me kind of made me who I am now because of the career mm -hmm. I chose. Because if I was cho chosen some kind of job where I work in the office, it would not be the same. You know, I would be still a shy person. I would still be to myself, quiet. But this kind of job and career kind of made me who I am now as far as like outspoken person. You know, yeah. I'm more confident. Also, right. you know. So, so going back to high school, uh, ninth grade, you came in by 12th grade. What, what was your life like when you were in 12th grade? It was better, you know, from nine to 12, from nine, I think ninth, 10th, it's kind of funky year. Then the 11th, 12th year was better because then the language got better. Um, I played soccer there. So I started to meet more people and, uh, kind of, especially with, when you're a pretty good soccer player, you, you people um, start to uh, kind of respect you, start to get to know you, they want to be around you. And uh, so it was a lot better, you know. Also, you create new friends. They're more more popular because you play on a team with them. So 12th year was a lot better, you know. Let's just say that, you know, I went from being like nobody knew me to one of the popular kids in school. And, and at that time, as you were kind of, uh, going towards graduation and looking forward to your life, uh, what kind of people did you have around you as far as advising you in terms of do you go to college, do you go to work, do you do this or that? Like, what what, what was your circle like? And then what were some of the choices you made at that time? Um, the circle wasn't a great circle, to be honest. Uh, I, I can't I can't tell you that I had a good circle of friends where they're doing great things, you know. Um, in school, you know, I, I hung out with people that were more popular because I tried to, you know, become popular. So I don't feel like the girls tried to get girls, tried to be more popular. So I wasn't in the best circle of people that were doing, you know, going to college, you know, what. I was in a circle more of people that were like hustlers. You know, they were like, 
uh, okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna make money this way. I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna refurbish the computer, and I'm gonna sell it that way. You know, I wasn't around the circle of people like traditional. I'm gonna go to college. I'm gonna graduate. To be honest, I didn't even graduate school. You know, got to top 12th grade, and I was so behind when it comes to like um, grades and uh, the the point system, uh, how you gotta in order to pass school. That by 12th grade, they said, "Hey, listen, you could stay." one more year in the 12th grade um, or you could go to BOCES you know which is uh, like um, GED get your GED and then my sister was coming in ninth grade so I was going to, if I stayed another year in 12th my sister was going to come and be with school with me and I did not want that <laughs> so I was like uh, I think I signed up for another year to get like for a couple credits for here a couple classes here and there and then the rest of it was in BOCES and I just didn't didn't go to school at all because just like I knew it wasn't for me, like, like learning, you know, geometry and things like that, that I was like, I'm not going to apply any of that uh, to where I'm headed because I had no, I had zero plans on going to college because I hated mm -hmm. school. So like formal education was just not, not your thing? No, it was not my thing. And uh, I, I would not have, I would have spent a lot of money in school and college if I decided to go to college. I would not got, get anything out of it because I hated mm -hmm. school. I just hated uh, the education system, how it was. It just wasn't applied to, to how I learned. Yeah. You know? so, so what did you do? Like, what, where did you go from there after, after the 12th grade? A regular job, you know, you get it, you know, how in European parents, there's no such thing as not working, you know. You, you get a job. So so instead I went and I got a, a job where I inspected parts, you know, like there was computer comp parts for hospitals and I had to inspect it. So I was looking through this, like this little screen the whole time. And that was my job. And I bounced from job to job because just, I didn't like what I was mm -hmm. doing, but I really liked training people. So like when that kept doing, you know, I had a job uh, doing, you know, at night, I was doing the inspections. During the day, I was working at the restaurant, you know, bussing, and uh, eventually was a waiter. You know, so I had multiple jobs, but I wasn't good with money. That's the problem, you know, like even though I had a lot of jobs, the jobs were made for me to spend it and kind of go out and party, you know, go out and buy a, a car that I can't afford, you know, so it was, I wasn't smart with money. You know, I was not smart with money. How I kind of got smarter with money was because, you know, I got to a point where I had no choice. You know, my dad got sick, you know, he had dementia and a uh, form of cancer. Um, and, uh, you know, I, my, my, my mom couldn't afford uh, his car payment. So what I did, I sold the current car that I had. Then I just started driving her car. Or my dad's car, and that way I kind of got rid of my mortgage, my uh, payments for the, the Lexus that I had, and kind of took over this Honda that I drove for probably like six, seven years. Mm -hmm. You know, and that kind of that that's one thing that kind of kind of kind of forced me to leave the whole you know impressing other people, trying to party, you know, go out to clubs. With my dad getting sick, when he got sick, and my mom needed me, and uh, I didn't know how much time. I had with him, so we spent a lot of time together, and that kind of just got me to focus on going to the gym, working, and then uh, saving money. You know, so that's that was kind of the, the flip how old point. were you at that time? You no, know, was uh, turning about twenty-five. Yeah, I was in school, so it was about three years. I went through like three years where literally I was very lost. You know, my parents were really questioning my my choices in life. To be honest, you know, I was very lost a uh, person, um, as in like, I was not, I didn't know where my future was headed, you know, um, it was a point where like, I was not put together. People think I was put together the whole time, but no, it was like for a couple, four, three, four years, like, I don't know where, where I'll be when I'm 30. Will I have a family? Will I have a wife? It wasn't like anything I sat there and planned, mm -hmm. you know? Somehow, kind of crawl out of that 
that whole being lost. You know? So kind of looking at that period of time uh, of your life, like from, let's say, 16 to 25, 24, um, if you were to give advice to people in that age group, um, what would you tell them? Uh, number one thing uh, that I spent a lot of time on that time was video games. You know, I, uh, as soon as I come from work, go and play video games. So I would say, stop wasting time in video games. I waste so much time and so much opportunities um, playing video games, trying to kind of avoid the real life and, and try to get into this game where it literally means nothing. You just literally waste time and it doesn't bring you any pleasure as far as like, you know, it doesn't bring you any, any joy after you turn off the game, you know? You just play it while you play it, and then you escape the reality. But then after you turn off the game, you're back to reality. Of you have no money, and uh, you just wasted time. So that's number one thing I probably suggest. Stop wasting time on things that don't bring you value. And video games steal a lot, steal a lot of kids' time. You know, that stole a lot of my time. Because I'm going to use an example. Do you know Paul yeah. Klemovich? Okay, so you look at his multimillionaire, and look at me. When he, I tell him the story all the time. When he was 16 through the 23 years old, uh, he was hustling as far as opening, trying to open a business, trying to make money, trying to save money, trying to buy cars. While me, I was focusing on just like, okay, make enough just so I could buy video games, make enough so I could go out and party, you know, on Saturday, Sunday, and make enough so I could make car payment, you know? I wasn't thinking about the future. I was living... At that moment and looking at our lives financial wise he is so so much more ahead of me when it comes to financial wise just because of that time period and i think the kids don't understand that time period where you have no responsibilities from 16 to 23 is a massive chance to get ahead of time ahead of people where i didn't take the opportunity you know I mean? yeah so, so so it's it's uh, the whole concept of delaying gratification right you can apply it to something small or you can apply it to like a period of time where you're like you mentioned yeah. if you hustle through that time you learn you you yeah. you make mistakes but you learn from them you get better and so on yeah. so you're you're delaying the gratification of the reward for later years rather than just like playing games and getting that gratification right away and then later years you're paying for it yeah, yeah. You pay you pay the price. That's like, it's it's not life, but it's expensive price. It's something you can't get back. You know, you know. You, you could have even better future if you just didn't waste that time and try to please yourself in the in a instant. You know, that quick gratification, like you said. Um, so that's one thing. Um, another thing, obviously, is get better better friends. You know, you know, inc uh, change your circle of friends. I was hanging out with people that didn't question my, you know, behaviors, didn't question whether I was playing video games. They were playing video games with me, you know? So it's like, if you hang out with, let's just say losers, you'd be a loser too. So I'd be very, I would suggest to myself, uh, pick your circle wisely, you know, pick your friends wisely. Are they, are there, uh, are they there to make you better or they're just a friend that keeps you, you know, at the same level mm -hmm. they are. You know, so just make sure you pick the right friends. You know, I'm not saying they're bad people. I'm just saying they were not, you know, somebody that I would hang out now with. They were not helping you to progress no. in life, like to get better and better. No. They were just kind of there to keep you company. Yeah, they keep you company. They were just company, you know. And uh, some of those friends, like we rarely talk now because they're still in that, in that space, mm -hmm. you know. So. Yeah. How did how did you navigate challenges and setbacks in your career and your personal life? Um, the challenges happen, but for me, it's like it get, it got to a point where um, my says is this: like nobody's nobody's gonna come here and like s save you. You know, nobody's coming here to like, hey, listen, pat you back. Oh, it's gonna be okay. You know, things happen. And it's like you gotta wake up next morning and just kind of do it. Like I stuff happens you know like you know some things don't work out i give i i don't think about like i don't get emotional about when they have setbacks you know setbacks happen and okay if it happens okay all right let's move on you know 
I just always had the belief that if I continue just work and continue just doing the the right things towards my goal, um, those setbacks will go away. You know, it's just a part of it's part of career, part of life. Mm-hmm. You know, so a kind of good perspective about that. So that's what I'm kind of blessed with. Yeah. So you you mentioned a little bit about your kind of financial education or the lack thereof when you were in that period of time kind of lost. Uh, but then after your, your dad uh, got sick and so on, you kind of tightened up certain things. What what did you learn about finances? Um, how are you handling finances these days? And what advice would you give to others about um, managing or kind of taking uh, taking ownership of their finances? Yeah, well, it's like, um, applied, I applied a lot of what I learned from bodybuilding and fitness into my finances. It's about discipline, you know, it's about discipline. It's like you got to put your financial life on a diet. You know, you can't just, you know, whatever you consume, whatever you uh, get when it comes to money, you can't just spend it. You got to have a budget for certain things. So I, I, when I started making certain mon- money, I started saving it. Uh, I didn't just thought about what I'm going to buy next. You know, that kind of my mind just transitioned from that before it was like a mindset where as soon as the money comes in, I already know where I'm spending it, you know? And then somehow as I kind of progress and kind of learning, it's like, Hey, listen, you can't just spend this money. You got to save it or put it somewhere that's going to help you have some kind of return. So what I learned is kind of like split my budget where it's like, I have 20% where money's coming in. It's going to go for entertainment, which means buying stuff that I want, you know? And then if I don't make that money, then I don't buy it, right? Then you got, you know, 25% that goes into savings for, you know, whether it's for something that might happen, something you, something you can't predict what might happen, you know, things break down, you know? And then you got 25% that goes right into investments, whether it's, you know, investment as in like you're saving money to buy a property, whether it's investment as in like it's going to stocks, whether it's investment to like another business, Mm -hmm. you know, and then the rest of the percentage is just uh, life expenses, you know, whether it's the car, your house, your, you know, mortgages, your leases. So as you grow, as I grew, the percentages would kind of stay the same, but the money would spread out more to each one because you're making more. So that, that, that discipline, that's what really got me out of the financial hole, you know, because it's like pretty much you put yourself on like a financial diet, you know, a game plan, you know, that's what really kind of got me out of the, the hole where I, I spent money before it even came to my bank. I already had plans. I'm like, okay, I'm going to spend this. as soon as I get this money. I'm going to buy this instead of now. It's like, I don't, I don't see the money coming in. It just goes to places where it needs to go. So how did you develop that discipline? You mentioned it's kind of started with bodybuilding. Um, it sounds like you, you didn't exactly have that discipline during that, we'll call them lost period of time. But after that, like, how did you develop it? You also, you start listening to people doing it. You know, you learn from other people. You know, there's so much, and as you know, we got to a year where you like, you know, you're 27 years old, and there's information out there. You start listening to people that have done it before what they do, you know, I started listening to a lot of podcasts, I started listening, reading articles, um, because I actually wanted to get to a point where I, I was financially, you know, free, quote unquote, you know what I mean? So, um, you start to really get into it. Like I started really getting into it. I kind of became like more passionate about, you know, not just my body, but like life as in like making money. You know, so you got to kind of look for information. But some people, in some cases, some people will have that information. They listen to others. But when you look at their life, they're still, they're not following that advice or that information. And they're just doing what they're doing. They'll agree with it, but they just don't do it. What do you think the challenge or the issue is? What's the disconnect there? Disconnect is, uh, it could be, there's not enough pressure, you know. If they fail, there could be somebody that they might, you know, save them. So they don't need to kind of 
put the pressure on themselves to do it, you know. Um, for example, like when my dad was gone, you know, eventually my, my, my dad wasn't helping me. You know, my brother had his own business. My mom was barely, you know, making it. So if I wanted a good life, it was up to me. You know, there was no such thing as like, okay, if I can't make a payment, somebody else would pay for it. You don't have the kind of, the kind of what's called the, uh, um, plan where or the kind of uh, let's say privilege that you could have somebody else might be paying for you that's you or you don't you don't do it or you stay broke and I didn't want to be broke you know at the, at the end of the day, at, at the end of the day like sometimes you could have the information but if people said they they want to get themselves to the financial rot where you do you have to do the work you know or it's just you just not come you're not this you're still comfortable you know they want to do something, like get out of some financial problem, but they're still making the same mistake. They're still comfortable, even though they're uncomfortable, they're still comfortable enough not to do anything about it. Like say, for example, like if I laid out um, stones, hot stones, and I say, hey, listen, lay down on these stones, you, you get your ass up real quick off those stones because it's super uncomfortable. If those stones were not ha, you could lay there for a little bit, you'd be cool. It's same thing with people, you know, if if you still kind of comfortable, you can take your time on, you know, not investing, not saving, not fixing your diet, not exercising, because you're still kind of comfortable. But when you get super uncomfortable, then you got to so, start moving. And sometimes when you're uncomfortable, you're already at a disadvantage where you can't get yourself out. So it's kind of like the boiling frog example. You've heard of it? Like yeah. where, where the... The yeah. frog you, you, is in the water in the pot, and you turn up the heat a tiny bit, and it doesn't feel yeah. the difference. And you turn up a little bit more, and you continuously turn it up, like progressively, and then it boils because it's used to yeah. it. Versus like yeah. being in cold water, and then you just have it instantly hot, and you jump out yeah. of it. The same thing. Same thing with everything like that. You know, the same thing with people. You know, um, gaining weight. You know. If if they if people gain weight from one choice, uh, one bad meal, and before you know it, they wake up the next day, they gain thirty pounds. I guarantee you, they would probably make better choices on a meal. But such slow progression of discomfort, that's where people uh, fall into, and it's kind of hard to get out because then you get used to it. It's like like a like I'm sure a pig, it it doesn't like to be sitting around in in filth. You know what I mean? But slowly, they kind of get used to it and just sits there and becomes the lifestyle. And I think it's the same thing with most people, too. Yeah, and then and then uh, yeah. those same people want, like, quick fixes, right? Like, they got into it slowly yeah. and they want it quick out. <laughs> yeah, and the same people, they want quick fixes, you know, whether it's in, when it comes to diet and when it comes to, like, financial. And they usually, those same people will get scammed. You know, people that say, oh, I got scammed. Well, nobody gets scammed. When it comes to like money, when they think long term, it's people that want quick fixes, people that want fast results, people that want to make you know uh, five thousand dollars in a week by following this guru. That's who gets scammed. Mm -hmm. But people that understand how this process works, how life works, and understand that it's going to take time, rarely they get scammed. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, how about some? Um... Some questions about mental or intellectual. So, like, as far as um, your role, like, in in terms of schooling, you didn't like formal school and so on. But when it comes to continuous education, I mean, from from China, kind of observing you from the sidelines and so on, you're growing, you're learning, you're you're doing things. It's not like like it's not like you said, I don't like education and I'm not going to learn anything ever again or whatever kind of thing. You just didn't like the formal education, but you're educating yourself. So what is that like for you? Um, I love education, honestly. Like what I'm every day, I, lo I love learning. Like I wish I had, maybe it's just I grew up, but or what I'm learning now, I love right now. Right now, every day I'm listening either to podcasts, I'm reading books, I'm trying to get as much information um, as I can out of other people, you know? Uh, because there's so much, I have, we have this amazing opportunity to, to learn to people that have done it. We're going to have to make the same mistakes, you know, and it's 
available to us for free. You know, you can start a business literally for free if you just listen to the right people and just Google the right things, but also apply it. And for me, all that free information, I love it because I understand that I can get even further in life, you know, because a lot of times why we are like sad, unenergized, because we're not moving forward, you know? And then for me, in order to always feel happy, I got to move forward. Whether it's like educating myself, whether it's learning myself, whether it's starting your business, whether it's, you know, progressing my business, I have to move forward. And to move forward, you got to have to have uh, new information. Mm -hmm. Because with new information, you can start to create new beliefs. You know? Yeah. Without information, you can't create new beliefs. And you mentioned uh, podcasts and books and like what what type of podcasts or what type of books um, do you listen to or read? So, uh, the three podcasts I usually listen to right now is I listen to the real Brad Lee because I like him because he's like straightforward like me. You know, he doesn't sugarcoat it, says how it is, but he also invites a lot of um, people on, on his podcast that will argue his point of views. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So he does invite people that he agrees with. So I love, I love the part. And he invites people from fitness space to um, real estate, to doctors, to everybody. So you could get information from a lot of people, you know, mm -hmm. which is, I like a lot. And the second podcast I like to listen to is uh, Alex Hermosi. He's got a podcast. He, um, he's into more fitness space and like sales. Uh, but he, his podcasts are short and they're very easy to apply. You know, if you just take the information and you start applying it, you'll get better. You know, it's like, there's a lot of information that I got from him when it comes to like sales and closing and stuff like that. They just listen to podcasts, mm -hmm. you know, so that's two podcasts. And then when it comes to like current events and mental um, discipline, I listen to a lot of like Andy Priscilla, you know, his podcasts are great because it's the same thing. He doesn't sugarcoat things like he sh says how it is, you know. And uh, for me, I kind of apply a lot of the stuff that I learned through his podcast. And it's, it's great. Like I said to people, like, hey, if you're driving to work, if you have 30 minutes from you and you're listening to music, you're wasting a lot of opportunity to learn. In that 30 minutes, even though you're listening to the background, something will save there in your brain. You might think something different. You might um, apply different choice in life, you know, just by listening to the right information. So it's like whatever you consume in your body is important and whatever you put in your brain is super important nowadays, you know, because nowadays there's a lot of information there, but you have to choose which information you're going to put inside your brain. And there's a lot of food to, for us available, but you have to choose the which food you can decide to put in your body. And it's a similar, very similar thing. You know, if you want to feel good, you have to put the right information in there. And if you want to look good and feel good, you have to put the right food in there, you know, in your, in right. your mind. How do you stay curious? So, uh, curious. Well, like I said previously, the, the way I like to stay, the way I stay curious is because I enjoy, I believe that I can't stop move, I can't stop progressing forward you know I think a lot of times um, people get quote-unquote depressed and sad is they because they kind of stop curious mm -hmm. they stop um, asking questions they start they stop you know pushing forward and this is that's a lot of times what causes people to kind of um, get into a rock you know they kind of their mind doesn't challenge themselves you know but also you hire people that will kind of push you to you know you hire a uh, financial coach you you hire people that maybe you know you pay money for people that will challenge mm -hmm. you you know you know sometimes you have to do when you get to this kind of level you have to kind of find a different force somebody else to challenge you to you know so you hire maybe a financial coach no, they say, hey, listen, you, you making five hundred thousand dollars a year? Okay, next year we're gonna make a million and a half. And you're like, how the heck am I gonna do that? And he's like, well, this is what you're gonna have to do. This, this, and that. And now, you you have the pressure of, okay, well, you have to kind of, you know, 
just get in your formation, apply certain things, build something, you know. So I think moving forward and just like always asking for new information is the best way to stay curious. I think. Okay. And then uh, how do you handle stress and um, being kind of mentally well fit? That's a that's a good question. Stress, you know, it's it, it, but when you look at stress, stress is like you either how can I say my I guess I'm blessed with the perspective, different perspective from most people. You know, I'm I really developed like a good mindset when it comes to stress. Uh, as far as like if something at work gets so busy where I have so many clients on my hands that I can barely fit them in. When that time comes, I ask myself, dude, wasn't wasn't this what you were praying for? You know? Why are you stressing? Yeah. Or look at back at like, you know, evidence, okay? Didn't you face something similar to this before? And what happened? You're fine now. So you just kinda have to really talk to yourself at that moment, you know? and uh, just move forward. So that's one thing. Um, I think also if you're stressed, as far as you have a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of things on your plate, that means you're doing some kind of work. You know, you, that means you, you're trying to build something, you know. It's pretty much like, you know, I'm gonna go back to weightlifting. If you have stress in your body, you know, over time, your body's gonna have to kind of able able to handle the stress better mm -hmm. I won't be so happy and same thing with life stress if you just handle it take care of it face it you'll be stronger a li little bit later if that same stress is not going to feel so stressful next time and the, I think that's the main problem we have now is people do not have the ability or don't have the tools mental tools to handle any stress. And this is why a lot of people are suffering from depression, anxiety, because, you know, as soon as something happens, small event of stress happens, they never conquer the small stresses, the any stress becomes depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. is that. So if you just conquer that stress over time, that little stress is no longer, you know, gonna be stressful because you've already done it. You know, you in brain, you'll be like, okay, I've done that before. I went through it. No big deal. You know, but it's the problem we have nowadays. Like as soon as people get a little stressed, they're like, Arr. they back off. And they're like, okay, I need, you know, a mental health day. It's like, no, that's not how you overcome the stress. And life is going to go out. Like I posted it today. You think about like stress, life is like a lion. And we are like gazelles. Mm -hmm. The lion is going to eat no matter what. It's going to be chasing the gazelle no matter what. And if you want those gazelles say, hey, listen, I don't want to play this game of chase. And you slow down, guess what? The lion doesn't care. The, the lion is going to tear you up, eat you up, and be done with you. It's going to keep chasing. It's going to keep running. Yeah. You know? And same, like, in life, same thing. Life doesn't care if you're stressed. You know, it's going to continue moving on. And you better learn how to just keep running. And that's why I'm like, okay, if I'm stressed, I still still have responsibilities. Yeah. Um, how much, like, uh, especially you being in the in the fitness kind of arena, how much being physically fit helps you to deal with stress? Well, it, it gives the confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're physically fit, you you already you already better than ninety five percent of the population. You know, because it takes discipline to be physically fit you know you already understand you know that you know to be in shape it, it's not easy so you ready you in order to, to people that will enter physical you know stress and they're in good shape they have some kind of discipline so they really have evidence of going through some kind of you know challenges you know so they're mentally can be a little bit stronger yeah that's what i believe you know well, it doesn't have to be a weightlifting, you know, if you're somebody that just runs all the time. But if you, you know, commit yourself to wake up every day and run, you're going to have a little bit more capability of dealing with stress because you have a, a, a 
evidence of confidence, you know, in yourself. Mm -hmm. You could go through, you know, challenges because you wake up in the morning while nobody else is, you're running. You know? So it's it's very important because physical, uh, being physically shape, in shape, how you can handle life stresses. But also for me, first I'm just uh, from my experience. When I we have a, when I have a bad day, or something's going on, I might be a little grumpy. You know, maybe business stuff's not going well. I'll go to the gym. I'll come back, and my wife will be like, "How'd you do? What? what, what? Like, where'd you go?" I'm like, "Went to the gym." She goes, "Yeah, you went. Like, you were like all pissed off. Like, you know, before you left, and now you came back. You're like hugging, kissing. You're like all cool." And I can't explain this like called idle therapy. It's just to escape. You go there. You take care of yourself. You come back. You, you kind of start to understand the problems will solve itself you know? yeah. and for me it's very important yeah how do you uh, build and maintain meaningful relationships um well i have my relationships as far as how many people i call friends is very limited you know i i'm very picky on who i'm associated with you know they have to they have to bring something to the table mm -hmm. because i'm okay like i'm an introvert i'm okay with spending time by myself like i don't need people but if i like somebody and i'm spending time with you that means you're bringing some kind of value to me whether it's you um bringing something as far as knowledge through you know through fit, through business, whether it's somebody that has something in common with me when it comes to fitness, but it's we. Anytime I spend time with you, I want to be growing, mm -hmm. you know. So when it comes to relationships, got to be sure we have a lot of things in line. There's a, there's a lot of a lot of good people that I know, but I won't hang out with them because like when we go, I don't want to be talking about the past. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be talking about what we used to do i want to be talking about like okay what are we gonna build okay what are you doing now you know like i'm going out to dinner with my friend dennis and i'm opening a gym in january and he's got a gym so we can bounce ideas of like hey what works for you you know how can i do how can i not make same mistakes and those are the kind of relationships i want to have you know i want to have meaningful relationships whether it's having small ones but meaningful mm -hmm. ones what about family? Like, um, what what's your kind of uh, interaction or or life work balance with family? Yeah, that's something like you know I have an amazing relationship with my wife. You know, um, when it comes to like overall success, I tell this to my wife. When it comes to like overall success, I believe I am the most successful person that I know because of everything. I'm not talking about just like you know money. I'm talking about like everything. I am physically in probably the best shape of my life at 35. You know, I have amazing relationship with my wife where we still, you know, have awesome relationship where I have an amazing son. I'm in good, uh, like I said, I'm in good health. I make a good amount of money. And I have, you know, great relationship with my brothers and my sisters, you know. So in that form, I believe like, that's for me is the max of success because not, a lot of times people have money, but they don't have other right. things, you know, I know friends, you know, I have friends, they have a, amazing relationships maybe, but they're struggling financially, you know, they're great with money, but their relationships suffer or they're out of shape, you know? So that's one thing that, that I love about my relationship that makes me whole, but also we are on the same page, you know, me and my wife, I mean, we eat the same way, you know, we discipline our son the same way. Um, we take our health and fitness very seriously, you know, and she pushes me in different ways. She pushes me as far as like, you know, building a house. I was like, okay, we're going to live in an apartment um, in a townhouse until, you know, I make a certain amount of money and then we build a house. Then she's like, okay, let's, let's go look at the land. So we looked at the land, it was like three years ago, and she's like, okay, well, let's build a house. I'm like, I can't afford this house. She's like, oh, we'll, 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 we'll have, we're not going on vacations, we'll, 
we'll, uh, we'll make this happen. So yeah, okay. Well, now we know it's like the house is built, we're doing fine. So she pushes me into like making better, uh, more risky decisions as far as like building our home, house, you know, things that we that we use daily. So she's she's a good uh, good partner, um, and uh, that's very important. You know? Yeah. Uh, what about like social or community? Are you involved in any kind of social um, social groups or community groups? Um, no, I don't get like crazy involved with like as far as like community. Like, like people have this, this Ukraine, big com Ukrainian community here. Um, I don't get involved in a lot of communities and uh, things. I think like the way I. Uh, uh, show my like um, give my way back my give back to people is like I donate things to people that donate to certain groups and stuff like that but I don't talk about it I just send the money and then I'll donate with that but I don't belong in any like certain groups you know I think I give giving people information through social media free uh, free guidance trying to inspire people is my way of giving people back, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's sometimes maybe it's repetitive, but sometimes it takes a while for people to hear in order to kind of make the right moves. And, uh, just through like social media, so many, I guess, so many messages, how like I impacted people in a positive way by like, you know, um, giving them advices, you know, uh, being encouraging, you know, telling people to believe in themselves and again, like, daily messages on how what I say has impacted people. So I think like that's what kind of what the what makes me continue to do that kind of stuff is just kind of be present on social media and give my time to them. Yeah. Like that. Uh what role does like spirituality, religion or personal relationship with God play in your in your life? Uh, it's it's massive, you know. It's massive um uh, I believe that like you have to have some kind of relationship to a high being, you know. Um, I I grew up in a uh, Christian religion, you know, Pentecostal religion. Um, so God was always part of my life, you know. Every day, my son, my wife, we pray before dinner. I think it's important uh, to have some kind of religion, some kind of faith, you know. Because when things get really bad, and you know you have something to fall on back on, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's good to have that like safety blanket, you know. I um, also it's like without some kind of religious, some kind of you know, somebody watching you and uh, judging your actions, I think you'll make better choices in life. What kind of person you become, you know, if you believe that somebody's like, hey, this could be judgment later you make better choices you know because you don't want to uh face that judgment i'd rather you know live my whole life um good and think that hey listen if i get judged i'll uh, you know i'll be able to pass it as a good person and make it up there then you know just be a complete you know a-hole my whole life and uh find out that there is something you know up there yeah. you know so I always, I think it's just, it's important for people to have that kind of, you know, mindset of there's somebody out there as far as a God and, um, he is, he is judging our actions and who, who we are, you know, um, cause like when it comes to the Bible, like I still remember a lot of it. And, uh, you know, if you read the Bible, you can learn a lot from it as far as when applying to it life and if you just apply a lot of things it doesn't matter how you um translate in your mind but you'll get a lot out of it you'll be a better person for mm -hmm. sure not worse yeah uh what about your your physical lifestyle or routines in your life what is that like today like uh, as far as working out as far as eating as far as um uh, going out what, whatever it is uh, it's it's pretty simple now uh for me but if I tell somebody else, they say I live like a monk. <laughs> but for me, I feel it's very flexible now. You know, um, I'm a very routine-oriented person. 
and I love my routine. Uh, I wake up in the morning. I usually wake up at like 4:15, um, 4:20. If that's if it's 4:20, that means alarm is waking me up. If it's 4:15, it means I wake up by myself. I wake up as soon as I wake up. That means I'm going downstairs. That's just my routine. I go downstairs. I drink water. I get a cup of coffee and I go upstairs. I write down three things that I'm grateful for. You know, a piece of paper because I believe if you write it down and you see it. Uh, it just sticks to your brain a little bit longer throughout the day. So I write down three things I'm grateful for, and then I look over a couple like daily goals I have set for myself, which I write the night before, and I just gotta see those goals. And then I get on my computer and I start kind of working, working, answering some emails to my clients for like 45 minutes, and then uh, after that I go and I do cardio. I wake up, I do the cardio for 25 minutes. And it's not negotiable. So, if, you know, if I don't wake up, you know, early enough, that means, you know, I'm doing cardio uh, a little bit faster. It means higher intensity, which is, which is sucks. <laughs> <laughs> when you're still kind of half asleep. So I do cardio, then I take a cold shower, and then I'll head to work, you know. And then I'll train clients from like 6 a.m. till usually like 4.30, 5.30, you know. And I usually have, every hour I have clients. But between clients, there's always other businesses you got to take care of. So I have in-person training. I have the online coaching. I have real estate. I have supplement companies. So the question is always coming into the phone. So I'm always trying to stay on top of things um, while still having um, to run the social media a little bit. Um, so that's my day. Then get home. Get home. My wife usually... We have dinner, white makes dinner, we have dinner, and then we kind of relax. If uh, my son has some kind of activities after school, after, I mean, after dinner, that means I'll take him to Taekwondo and stuff, and do the daily stuff. And uh, that's like, I think that's the hardest transition for me that I find in my daily routine uh, is going from being like a trainer where you're working, 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 to coming home and training it off and becoming a dad and a husband, you know, turning it off mm -hmm. part. I think that's my challenge that I want to get better at is knowing when to turn off the whole ent ent uh, entrepreneur per person and becoming just present dad and, and a husband. I think that's the biggest challenge that I'm facing as far as current time in my career um, because your brain still wants to work. but. Then we hang out a little bit and then the routine continues, you know, and then when we go out, we go out. I try to have a date night at least once a week with my wife, uh, where my son is not involved because it's completely different conversations you have with the person, you know, they connect different ways and you can't lose um, that connection with with your wife um, because, you know, you're putting your kids first. You know, your wife was always first, so I always try to give it time to her, you know, as far as, you know, taking on a date, having certain conversations, you know, fixing some things in the relationship when needs to, because sometimes you have to have those hard conversations uh, wow. out, you know, because if you have it out, you know, maybe she won't cry or, you know, people won't give as much, as much, as emotional because other people are around. In fact, if you have a home, it's not going to come out the same way, oh, yeah. you know. So we uh, always, like we, when we go out, we always kind of ask uh, each other where we could improve, uh, how the week went, you know. So it's uh, it's it's good, you know. And then you get to enjoy some different foods. My diet, as far as my diet, I keep everything simple, you know. Uh, people that follow me see that I eat very simple, simple meals, you know. Everything has high protein in it, um, and uh, some carbs. And then uh, at dinner. I usually, whatever my wife makes, but like as I said earlier, we are on the same page when it comes to, when it comes to mm -hmm. eating. So when I come home, I have zero doubt that it's going to be something that uh, I'll be able to eat. Okay. Uh, what do you think is the biggest barrier to people maintaining a healthy physical lifestyle? Mm. Too many choices, you know? You know, you right now there's no real pressure to be in good shape. Mm -hmm. 
you know, if you look at average, average person, you know, most people are out of shape, you know, so you kind of fit into the average group. So there's no pressure to kind of, you know, be in good physical shape. And there's more pressure on females. That's why I work with more females to be in good shape, but men, as far as, as far as men, um, it's the, the standard of a physical level has kind of diminished, you know, because uh, physicality is not re not required anymore, and a lot of a lot of men don't take it seriously anymore. So it's kind of the the culture or the environment around us, and and it's kind of yeah. common denominator or the average. Everybody kind of gravitates to the average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's like like when you look at me, it's like people don't look at me as like I'm an average person. They look at oh he's that. He's some unique person, you know, because he's in shape, you know. And if you go to like a Walmart and stuff like that, people look at me like, "Holy crap," you know. Because you know, if you want to see what average person looks like in America, go to an amusement park. Mm -hmm. You will find out how scary it is. And if you're just doing a little bit better than that, you're really, you're really good, you know. So it doesn't take a lot uh, for people to. Um, to be in shape, you know, not in shape, but be a little bit better than average. Mm -hmm. So what, but, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. go ahead. There's a lot of choices when it comes to like food, you know, you know, we have, we have food in every single corner mm -hmm. of our, of anywhere we turn this food, you know, whether it's fast food, whether it's grocery stores, gas station, there's food everywhere. And, Nowadays, you don't even need to travel far in order to to get the food, you know. So you don't expend as much energy. You know, you go to a grocery store, you find the per the closest parking spot. You go in the grocery store, you get the most caloric dense food possible. You come back the same parking spot. I mean, you we move. Average person moves about two thousand steps a day, and then they eat over three thousand calories a day so obviously people want to put on weight because the availability of food is so available but um the requirement to move the body is not much mm -hmm. after this all the all the work it could be done through a computer you know so it's tougher as far as like the culture we live in now yeah what would you recommend to those who who feel like they've tried so many times they, they would start some kind of a exercise routine and then either give up or something else comes up and they, they feel like they've started so many times and they're still not where they want to be physically. What, what would you re recommend for them to do? Um, I think a lot of times people, when they start these kind of things, they start with, with what is the best thing out there. You know, they don't look at as what is the best thing for me, but they do. They look for what is the best thing out there. And when you look at what the best thing out there is for when it comes to like fat loss, when it comes to getting physical shape, it's those drastic diets. Mm -hmm. So yeah, people get on there. They could do it for two, three weeks, and uh, they get some kind of a little bit of result, but it's not sustainable. And then before you know it, they quit and they start over again. Compared to what they need to do is do the little things, you know, just small steps of improvements every single day. You can start with as simple as just tracking what you eat, you know, just track what you eat to see, put it in, there's apps that you could get on my fitness pal, for example. Just plug everything you eat and just find out exactly how much you're eating. The first thing you'll find out is you're eating way too many, way too many carbohydrates. You were eating way too many calories, and the thing that you thought was so healthy, for example, a handful of nuts, is 350 calories, you know? So you will learn a lot just by plugging all the food in. And when it comes to exercise, people think they have to go and start running. You know, you don't have to go running. Just get a step tracker that's like 13 bucks on Amazon, and just try to get 10,000 steps. Let me just move around more, whether it's around the house, whether it's going on a treadmill and just walk, you know, whether it's, you know, 
go on the elliptical, whatever you want to do, just get 10,000 steps. Mm -hmm. And the third most important thing, it's time. Other stuff is going to take time. You know, you gained 40 pounds in three years. Don't expect it to lose in three months. It's going to take time. But when you are you going through this process, change your habits. Don't just change the diet. Change the way you have it. Change your environment. You know, I'm not, um, when it comes to back to me, I'm not different. I'm not disciplined anymore. I just, I just have a better environment around me when it comes to, you know, when I look and when I open the fridge, there's no food that will tempt me to overeat because it's just food I eat every day. I create that environment. My, my closet is full of gym clothes. So I had to pick up gym clothes, I go to the gym. You know, you have to sh start slowly. Those people that want to seriously want to change forever, how they eat and how they look, they have to slowly, day by day, change their environment. At what, and we, where they end. You know, it's same when it comes to finances too, you know. Same thing with fitness and take it slow. Do, do the hard things, which is like track your calories, you know, Take the, take do the walks, and the most important thing is give it time. You know, yeah. that's the hardest thing for people is give it time. You know, it's like this, this thing I, I tell my clients. It's like I could give you a perfect recipe, right? You could have the best recipe for making the best cake in the world, but if you decide to buy all those ingredients, make it the way you are. But the last part you forgot is. Instead of putting it three on uh, three fifty for thirty minutes, you stuck in the oven for five hundred uh, for fifteen minutes. Guess what? The cake is being burnt. It's not the same recipe. Well, it's same thing in fitness. You might have the same recipe, but if you try to speed it up because you want to go on this drastic diet, you know you gotta start training. You know five days a week. You know, guess what? You're gonna bring yourself mm -hmm. out before you know you're starting over again. It's not the same recipe. Yeah. You know, so just track your calories. So I'm going to simplify it real quick. Track your calories. Um, if you're a male, try to eat about 2,000 calories a day, 200 grams of protein. Make sure you track how much protein you eat. Every meal, try to have about 30 to 40 grams of protein in each meal. Um, if you're a female, 1,500 calories, and then about 130 to 140 grams of protein a day. You do that, and then you combine it with 10,000 steps, you will lose weight. You will lose body fat, no matter what, you know. And then you can apply strength training to maintain muscle, to boost your metabolism, you know, and just over improve overall fitness. Yeah, sounds good. Um, what do you consider key ingredients in fulfillment and meaningful life? Yeah. Well, I think I would describe when I describe a relationship is that you have to be as a whole, you know, got to make sure you have, um, I know people say money doesn't bring happiness, but trust me, it's very important to have a fulfilled life because eventually money is going to able for you to create more memories, you know, whether it's travel, whether it's experiences, you could buy a lot, a lot more experiences when you have more money. You know, so I think money is important. I'm not saying it's number one, but I say it's important. Your rela the relationships you have, uh, your friends, but also the relationship you have with your partner and your kids is very important. You know, health is probably, I would say, the top one. Because when you don't have health, nothing else matters. You know, nothing else matters. So that and then you can have have some kind of connect spiritual connection you know, I don't know what uh, whether for me it's God you know you can have some kind of connection with God uh, just so it, it's always good to have that connection with him because you know you always feel safer when you have that yeah it's like when I think about my life it's like when how far I came it's like dang like how why did I deserve to have this? Like, why, you know, why did he chose me? But I always believed in him, you know? So he, he gave me the uh, the opportunities, he opened the doors, 
and then I was the one that had to um, walk through those doors, you know, but the doors were there, yeah. you know, he gave me the, so um, you got to have that. So I say, you know, financial finances, relationship uh, with your uh, friends and, and, and family, relationship with God, and then health and fitness. Mm -hmm. Nice. Four. Yeah. What do you consider like the most uh, important factors in achieving work-life balance? Mm. It's, there's no such thing. There's no such thing as work-life balance. I had this conversation with Nicole that somebody kind of challenged me like, uh, you don't have any balance. And I was like, okay, well, the people, they have work-life balance. When you come in, you work, let's say, nine to four. You don't hustle anything after because you want balanced life. What do you come back to? What are you really coming back to balancing that work with? TV? You know? TV? Beer? You know, video games? What are you balancing with? Compared to, for myself, I might not have that balance, work-life balance, but I'll hustle. But my memories that I could use... Uh, the money with are way better than the balance. You know, I could I could take my family to a vacation for two weeks if I want to. You know, I could buy the McLaren that I always dreamed of. Yes, it's not balanced life, but I create better moments even though they're shorter. Compared to the person that wants you to have fifty fifty. You know, there's no like if you really want a good life, there's no such thing as work life balance. You know. There's you, you push gas and then you break a little bit, you push gas, you break a little bit. Yeah. But there's no, non -day, it's not like a daily thing that you have like balance. And people need to stop chasing, stop chasing that. Just like the, like the same thing, like people need to stop chasing the weekends. Yeah. Like that, it's, they don't understand like the whole weekends. Like you got to have a weekend. Right. You know? I mean, it, I, I call it like integrated life. It's, it's one life. There is no no work and but but maybe because we're kind of business owners so it's a little bit different for us no you i agree with you it's all one life there's no such thing that's division you know you can't just take it for me i can't just like you know when i'm with uh you know with my wife i can't just like say listen i don't care about business you know there's still gonna be some involvement right you know? but when i go on vacation, i could turn off the business and I just spend time with them. You know, I have the opportunity. I don't have to worry about bills. You know, compared to other person, they're like, okay, well, you know, yeah, I went to vacation, but I come back, I have to worry about bills to pay for. It's not really, you're not really on vacation anymore. You're just worrying about what's next right. coming. Yeah. So you mentioned a little bit about how you discovered your passion or calling in life. And I'm assuming your, your passion and calling is, is bodybuilding and fitness and training and so on. Uh, is there anything you want to elaborate on that as far as like somebody who's young and they're like, I don't know what to do in life. You know, I'm, I, I don't know what's out there. Like, how do I find my passion or my calling? Yeah. Um, for me, like I got lucky that bodybuilding led to, you know, financial, you know, where place where I could make money, but it doesn't mean that you have to. This whole thing that, hey, follow your passion and then follow your dream, follow your, follow your, like, you know, your passion so you don't have to work a day in your life. Like, I don't believe in that because it's not for everybody. It's like, yeah, you could follow, you might be passionate about, you know, I don't know, like, let's say you might be passionate about bodybuilding. Okay, that's great. But can you, how can you translate that into making money? You know, you got to have some kind of plan on how you're going to make money. So that sometimes means you have to have a regular job in order to get yourself into a place where you're making money through fitness, right? It's not just like, okay, I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to do fitness. It's not how it works. No, you first got to have to do something that you don't like doing until you get to a point where you could just follow your passion. You know, um, when it comes to like, um, bodybuilding, bodybuilding is like, 
as far as fighting as we know it, like getting on stage and stuff like that, that's no longer like my passion, I would say. You know, I think self-development is my main passion. Mm -hmm. You know, like self-development overall as a person, I think that's my main passion nowadays. As in like... Yeah, so you think that maybe people are kind of chasing the wrong thing. Maybe they're chasing like, oh, I want to know what my passion is. I want to know what my calling is. And then in the meantime, they're not really doing much versus just doing what you're, what, what's around you. And then that either becomes your passion or becomes your calling or whatever it is, or you pivot on it and, and do something else afterwards. Exactly. Exactly. Like, don't try to chase the passion. Like do what you do, what you're doing now, you know, do really good. And maybe that will become your passion, you know, you know, so it's like stop chasing that one thing so much, you know, sometimes you just got to do what you have to do and then eventually kind of the passion will grow into it. Like I, I was not passionate about self-development right away, mm -hmm. but those things that like bodybuilding, you know, financial career and how it affects my life, I want that for other people. So now I'm passionate about giving that knowledge and the information and to other people. So that's where my passion is. Like I want everybody, a lot, I want people to get in the best shape of their life. I want people to make as much money as possible. I want people not to depend on the government when it comes to money. I want people to have good relationship. That's what I'm, I'm passionate about. And for me, in order to give the information to people, I have to have experience with it, you know? So this is where like the another thing is like I have to learn more and continue to apply on myself so I could give that information and that experience to other people so they could take it and they could apply it to their life and then they have the same similar result, you know, as in creating creating a healthy body, you know, uh, making good money, you know, following, you know, again, following their passion as far as like creating a career where they, they're happy with what they have, you know, instead of just going nine to five job. Yeah. If you could go back in time and change one thing in your life, what would that be? One thing. I would probably say, <sighs> well, we discussed about um, the whole video games part. I would uh, definitely not waste that 16, 16 to 23, 24 years old that time. If I was what I am now mentally, I'll go back and uh, I would apply a lot of like hustle, a lot of um, discipline that I have now to that person. And I would have, by now we been way miles ahead. Accordingly. I'm happy with I'm, where I am. Don't get me wrong. Very, very, very happy with where I am. I'm just kind of thinking, reminiscing as far as I can find to what I know now and applied it from 16 to 23, which is like seven years. Whew. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> How do you stay motivated and focused on your goals? Uh, um, I think motivation is uh, another thing that people misunderstand, you know. Uh, motivation is very, very temporary. You know, um, sometimes, like uh, most of the time, I'm not motivated to even work out. I'm not motivated to do what I'm doing. But there's like certain pressure that uh, I already put on myself to live up to that I just have to do it. So that drives me. You know, I uh, when I post, if you read any of my uh, Instagram post when I post those things it's 90% of the time I'm not even talking about anybody I'm talking about my future self I'm, I'm a past self um, I'm keeping myself accountable so when I say hey listen you gotta level up take risks it's to myself so okay level up this risk that means I'm gonna like for example me opening a gym that's me leveling up taking risks, opening my own gym, you know what I mean? So I put those kind of pressures on myself by posting 
certain things uh, that will like people think they're talking about them but it's mostly f for me to keep myself accountable and not be a hypocrite to those things so like you know I used to criticize people that would get out of shape once they have kids so now anytime like I have a son now and life gets busier and I want to skip that workout I'm like I don't want to be the person that gets out of shape because of the kid you know the person that I talked about before you know or you know you know a person that once they get in a relationship they they gain weight you know I don't want to be that person that levels down once they get in a relationship gets comfortable you know so I'll, maybe back in the day I'll, I'll post that before I was even married you know so now I have to keep myself accountable to those words even though nobody read it maybe nobody even cares about it I know about it so that's that's what kind of keeps me motivated it's kind of like the pressure and uh, sometimes you just have no choice if we have no choice like if you have a lot of people depending on you you know once you get your wife depends on you your son depends on your success you know um, you have employees that depend on your success you have no choice but to get up and do what's necessary you yeah. know yeah, definitely. Uh, what what life lessons have had the most impact on you? Like things you've learned up to this point. What was the most? What was one thing that had the most impact on you? Um, one lesson in my life had the most impact. It's a good question. Um. Which, which uh, it's a lesson that like I learned, but it's still something that I have a hard time kind of putting into place, and that is making sure I uh, take the time and appreciate where I am now, mm -hmm. instead of always chasing what's next. You know, I appreciate what I already built. That's a hard. That's a hard thing for me right now. That's it's not a real lesson. I can't say that if it's a lesson, but it's something that I need to start doing more. If if that makes sense, like the impact I had on the fitness industry, what I have built, my current life. Because right now I'm so focused on tomorrow, you know, that I'm not appreciating it now, yeah. and from. From everybody that I, li I listen to, the, everybody says, I appreciate the current moment, you know. But you never know what tomorrow is, but I have a hard time always chasing what's next. I'm just like sitting there, wow, my life is pretty cool, like doing that kind of stuff more often. Mm -hmm. um, what habits or routines contribute most to your daily success and happiness? Um, I think having a uh, structured uh, morning routine is very important for me you know having um discipline like i said to do certain things in the morning that will free up my time later in the day so like waking up in the morning taking care of the online work um doing the things that don't doing the stuff that doesn't require you know we're, we're doing the stuff where other people don't, don't require my attention mm -hmm. you know morning that morning two hours where you use it by yourself i think that's so crucial to my routine okay um how do you approach like decision making and deal with uncertainty um well uh, uncertainty only happens like it happens because there's not enough evidence of you doing certain things like we talked about before like, uh, if you don't have confidence to make a decision it's because probably before like, you don't have uh, enough evidence that you succeeded but now the more you the more you succeed the more evidence you have that you could do it so you have better um, or more confidence on making decisions that, you, that whatever decision you make is going to be the right decision. Mm -hmm. So just kind of the the background of building success yeah, of upon success kind of a thing. Yeah.
yeah, it's yeah. definitely. So it makes the decisions much, much easier to make, you know, because like if you uh, continue to win and you have another decision, another play to make, you'll be more confident to make that play because you already made a lot of successful plays before. Compared to if you make a play, you continue to fail, you know, the next decision that's going to come, you're more likely to hesitate. Yeah. yeah. So I see a guitar behind you. You play much? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I started, that was a gift for me. Uh, that was a gift for me to play. And to be honest, I haven't touched it in probably six months. I, I bought one for myself too, like trying to learn just as a side thing and, and never yeah. really took yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, my, my buddy, uh, Josh, is really good. He was teaching me. And I got to get back into that at least, like, at least hour, you know, a couple hours a week, you know, because like, uh, it was good, you know, I was getting kind of good at it, but then pretty much made as good as I didn't have time, uh, but I have to devote time. Yeah. It's a good, good skill yeah. to learn. What else would you want to share with, uh, with everyone out there? Um, it's a, it's a great interview, Jerry. I, like, I really enjoyed the interview. Uh, good questions. You you helped me actually to think a lot, help me think a lot, and kind of open up some of my things and ask myself some questions, which I will take forward. And I really ask those questions. You know, like the question of what challenged challenge in my life really, really one of the most ch biggest challenges that I had to overcome. Um, you know, that's one thing I have to really think about and come up with a good answer for myself you know so i think it was great i just want to share with people that hey, listen um if you looking up at like my life or you decide to search my name and find out my life what you see on instagram and stuff like that it wasn't always like that you know it's not always it wasn't always like that you, what you're seeing right now is a highlight reel you know of my life you know, you're going to see the, the low points, the, you know, the time where there's no money, there's negatives in the bank account, the time where there's no food, you know, no food as far as like, I would have to only eat like cottage cheese and tuna in order to hit my protein goal as far as like bodybuilding. Um, what you see now is just a highlight reel. So there's, you seen a lot of, you don't see a lot of fumbles. You don't see a lot of mistakes. Um, a lot of like hard times, you know, because I don't, I don't want to share those things with people because like they're, they're not your problem, but, um, I want to inspire people through what you could accomplish. So if you look at my life and you're like, oh, that's, he's doing so awesome. It's, it's possible for everybody as long as you apply the right, um, actions to your, to your goals. Because if you have goals, whatever your goals are, and you're not taking the right actions, um, those goals will continue just being like wishes. You know, you're hoping things to happen, but they're not going to happen. So um, stick with it. Stick with whatever goal you have, whether it's making a certain amount of money, whether it's losing a certain amount of weight, whether it's, you know, having certain kind of relationships. Stick to the goal, but make sure you have the right plan and the right kind of uh, work ethic behind it. You know, that's a lot of times what we don't have is that we have these goals, but we don't have the same hustle to match it. You know, so. Yeah. Uh, are there any like announcements or anything you mentioned you're starting or opening? Um, uh... Yeah. So we're in a gym. That's going to be really cool. Uh, something that I've been wanting to open for a while now, but didn't have the right opportunity but now you're gonna open a gym it's gonna be a gym private gym my clients or people that are training with me only very exclusive gym and there's gonna be boxing training there like skilled boxing training not just cardio um there's gonna be a barbershop and this would be a professional um a sport massage therapist uh it's gonna be a very nice gym and uh and it's gonna be like kitchen there with meals, healthy meals provided for people, smoothies and stuff like that. So it's gonna be all one stop 
shop stop um, for a gym. We're also going to have, um, I'm trying to connect with uh, a doctor where he's going to be providing blood work for people every six months in order to see how they're improving or what they could improve on in order to for people to be as healthy as fit as possible. So it's going to be something different, something cool. And uh, yeah. Nice. Awesome. What area is that going to be in? What town? Uh, it's going to be on at, on University Avenue in the city, like right around the, the closer to like um, Pittsburgh and uh, Webster area area. So it's like on the nicer side of University nice. Avenue. Nice. Yeah. It's yeah, nice. it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I definitely enjoyed it. It was yeah. great. Um, we'll put some links yeah. to your um, to your website, IvansFitness.com. Yeah. And uh, anything else yeah, you want to mention? If you guys are looking for coaching, as far as like nutrition coaching, where we do one-on-one -on -one coaching, so we coach you on how to eat, how to track macros, on how to make it a lifestyle, how to change your habits, how to change your environment in order for you not just lose weight, but able to maintain the weight for the rest of your life. And if you go on the website, you'll see how people transform their lives it's just incredible and that's you guys can understand why i'm so passionate about it because you could go from you know uh, especially females we work with um a mom that's been putting so much work into devoting to kids you know raising the kids that they forgot about their body and then you know the kids are in high school and now you're not happy with your body so we were able to transform these amazing females losing 30 pounds, 40 pounds, 50 pounds a year, you know, and just building muscle and being like fit the best shape since college, you know, since high school. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And you do not, not only in person coaching, but you do online or remote coaching as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, online, online coach is now my main business. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody's interested, just go, go to the website, check it out. You can book, consultation with us we could talk to you and your goals that consultation is free so let's know yeah all right ivan again great speaking with you um this this has been great and uh looking forward to doing this again sometime in the future yeah definitely definitely once the gym is open we gotta do it again oh, yes yeah. yeah definitely uh, appreciate right. you man thank you have a good one